each of the five acrocenter cr chromosomes have essentially the same repetitive structure with large numbers of these ribosomal RNA genes. We're going to later on talk about a particular form of chromosomal translocation called a Robertsonian translocation, named after Liz Robertson. That's when two acrocentric chromosomes fuse together so that, for example, here we would have the Q arm of chromosome 14. Let me do this. We would have the the Q arm of chromosome 14 joined to the Q arm of chromosome 21, losing both of the short arms of those two chromosomes. That is not a problem because we have three, at least three other chromosomes that contain the same sequences. So one of the things you, when we talk about acrocentric chromosome translocations, we're going to realize is it's not a functional problem in terms of losing the ribosomal RNAs, although it may definitely be a functional problem related to the way that these chromosomes are going to segregate later on. Um, the chromosomes are divided up. You don't need to remember this, but there's very different ways of naming them according to groups. Um, they are pretty accurately um, uh, lined up according to their relative length, the only exception being that chromosome 21 is actually shorter than chromosome 22. That was a mistake that was made back in the early days of numbering them. Um, so chromosome 21, when you think of trisomy 21 and Down syndrome, um, remember that that is the smallest chromosome in terms of length. Now, each of you will have variations, slight variations, in the length of your chromosomes. So they won't all be exactly the same length because there's quite a lot of what's called copy number variation within the human genome. But in general, the order of genes on your chromosomes are exactly the same as the order of, of genes on anyone else's that same chromosome. If they're in different orders, that's probably an indication of a potentially pathological event. And even if it's not pathological, it can certainly interfere with things like replication and mitos meiosis. Now, these numbers are probably a little bit out of date, but they give the message that I really want to get across to you, which is that genes are not equally distributed across chromosomes in terms of numbers. So if you look here, on the top of each of these, and these are maybe a little bit old, but on the top of each of these chromosomes, I put a number, which is the approximate number of genes on that chromosome. Some chromosomes are defined as being gene rich, others being gene poor. And there are three here I want to really highlight. 13, with at this time only 290 genes. Uh, 18, with just 12 more. And 21, with actually a little bit more than either of those two. Why do I highlight those three? Trisomies. So if you think about the fact that in autosomes, there are only three viable, or at least viable for any period of time, trisomies that exist. And those are trisomy 13, 18, and 21. Why? There are small chromosomes. They're gene poor. So if you're thinking about, for example, dosage issues related to the number of copies of each gene, the less genes you have, theoretically, the less pathological or, or clinical outcomes you might, have, might, might um, expect. So that's a theory. It's never been entirely proven. But the concept is that gene-poor chromosomes have a greater potential for um, yielding um, viable trisomies. And we'll talk about that again in more detail. The last point I just want to make is here, chromosome, the Y chromosome, which has the fewest number of chromosome of genes. Um, we're going to talk a lot about the details of the Y chromosome, which is an interesting chromosome for at least 50% of the people in the room. Um, but we'll talk about why that is such a unique chromosome um, and why people think it might be degenerating so that males are, are on the way out. We, we're not quite sure that that's actually going to happen. At least not, not, maybe not in our lifetime. OK, so let's talk a little bit more about molecular biology. So here's just a question about gene structure. What is the name of a genetic element that can act at a distance to increase transcription of a linked gene? And again, there are questions like this that show up on, in UWorld and presumably on STEP. And 
there is 50. Excellent, so an answer, so everyone remembers that. Um, what the folks at, on, uh, at least at UWorld and presumably at Step like to do is show you diagrams of genes and ask you to identify particular elements. The one thing to remember about an enhancer is that it is position independent, unlike virtually every other genetic element that associated with gene expression. You can find enhancers within, upstream or downstream of genes, depending on what gene they are. And in fact, there's even evidence that enhancers can exist on different chromosomes and still influence expression of an unlinked.